Hi there, let's take a look at another firearm I recently acquired, a roller locked firearm, the CZ-52. Hi there, Cycle Camp here. Uh, we're going to be looking at a firearm I uh, acquired recently. Uh, this one falls under the category of uh, unusual actions uh, from my collection and uh, we're going to take a look at it in just a second. So here's a uh, it came with a couple of nice uh, accessories. Uh, first of all, it came with the, the holster. Uh, and this holster has a piece of reflective, or what used to be reflective tape on it, which I'm told the police in this particular area, that was a pretty standard thing. So uh, let's let's open it up and take a look. Uh, you, Some of you may or may not recognize this firearm. This is a Czech CZ-52. Uh, also came with the lanyard. Drive you nuts. Um, this particular one it has a it has a few scratches on it, but other than that, it's in very nice shape. Uh, it looks very little like it's been used very little. Uh, but uh, this was a police trade-in uh, for the from the Czechoslovakian police, and the reason this is an unusual pistol is because this uses. Okay, I lie a little bit here. This does not use a roller delay. It uses a roller lock system. And what happens is the, uh, the firearm cannot cycle until the locking roller pins are released by an internal mechanism. And that is how this uh, firearm stays in, uh, locked up until it's ready to go. Uh, I picked this up uh, recently and I haven't had a chance to shoot it yet. But I, I thought you might want to, you might be interested in, in taking a, a just a quick look at it. It does have the original uh, reddish colored Bakelite uh, or or whatever material they called it. I I generally call all this stuff it's either plastic or Bakelite, right? Uh, 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 hand guards, uh, you know, grip grips on it, so nothing spectacular there. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to take it down. So I know that you pull this thing, I think, you pull this back and then you pull these down. Well, let me get the, uh, it's, got a, it's got a heel release for the magazine, so we'll get that out of there. And I think, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I was, I was right the first time. All, all you have to do is pull backwards slightly on the slide, uh, drop these, these. Uh, you grab these two little knurled things here. You can see them a little easier. See, there's one on either side. And you grab them and you pull it down and you can see it pulling that. You can see it pulling that little step down. And that allows the, the uh, firearm to move forward. It is a hammer-fired gun. Uh, I pulled the trigger, but I didn't need to. Uh, and in here is the uh, is the mechanism for the slide itself, and here you can see these two uh, rollers, and these are what are going to um, you know delay the uh, delay the action when the when the gun goes backwards. So these these rollers you see now they're in they're caught in these notches on the side of the gun, but when the the firearm is fired and this whole thing starts to move or tries to move then what ends up happening is th those uh, those uh, rollers uh, uh, are going to end up uh, getting compressed so that, that's pretty slick um, there is a firing pin block here in the back so it does have a firing pin block on it uh, I'm not going to take it any further down than this so you can see the barrel uh, the uh, slide itself is in really nice shape the, the the most of the scratches and stuff are down on the frame and I don't know what's going on over here I don't know if somebody was trying to punch something out and screwed it up or what but uh, but it, it actually is in very nice shape these are supposed to be very nice shooting guns so I'm, I'm sort of looking forward to it it does it does have a safety the safety on this gun also acts as a decocker this is however a single action only gun so uh, you would typically carry it cocked and locked. Um, so we'll, we will take this out to the range and, and you know take a quick run with it and see what happens. And uh, it should be should be a lot of fun. 
Now I'm pretty sure to put this back together. Yeah, I'm gonna lay this on and just go back and forward with it, and now she's all put back together. So it's a very easy gun to, to do the initial strip on. Taking the the, the however, taking the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the guts out of this uh, don't look like it's going to be very simple. But you know there is a so there is a there is a, uh, a spring in here for the slide. Um, I'm not sure. I don't feel anything spectacular going on here. I can feel it. I can feel it trying to move, but obviously it's not something that I personally am going to be able to, to move without uh, without uh, a little bit more work. Now, one of the things I did get when I when I bought this gun was I got a booklet that uh, describes how to take it down and do all of that stuff. So I'll have to give that a little bit of a read and see what happens but it's a it's you know it's it's all metal framed except for the for the bake lake grips there's really not much to it and it you know looks like it'll be a lot of fun so you know, let me set this back together again and again there we are this does not have a uh, this does not have an interlock you can fire this without a magazine in place so I, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not real big. I, I mean, I would never carry something like this because I don't carry guns with safeties. I don't. I don't uh, prefer guns with safeties. I prefer double action, single action guns, uh, where you don't you don't have a safety. You just pull a gun out and use it. But uh, but it, it it feels great in the hand. Uh, it's a little bit the 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 uh, the grip is a little bit short for me. I have just I can just barely get my pinky around it. There's a little. There's a little kick out on the bottom. I can just barely get my thing on it. And for me, the, the length of trigger pull is kind of short. So I'm probably going to have a, a little bit of a tough time pushing this gun to the to the left because my, my finger is so, uh, you know, it's, it's almost 90 degrees when I, when I go to use it. So we'll see. The, uh, the sights on this are, you know, they're okay. Nothing spectacular. Uh, you know, black on black, so nothing really good. It is a it is a nice thin front uh, front sight, and uh, it is the notch is wide enough you can you can clearly see both sides of the of the rear sight. So like like I said, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, in addition to the in addition to the uh, uh, holster, I also got the cleaning rod, which is not something that you normally find with these. Uh, and I also got a spare magazine, so you know I, I thought it was a you know it wasn't an excellent price, but it was something I was looking for to get the roller the roller delay, and the firearm itself seems to be in very nice shape, and I was able to uh, let me put the let me put the guy back in here. I was able to. Um, Well, I derailed my train of thought. And as you can see, it's very clean. Let me uh, move that back out a little bit. You know, that's a that's in very nice shape as far as the uh, the lands and stuff are concerned. It's in very nice shape. So, you know, like most police trade-ins, it's pretty lightly used. You know, it's got holster wear. It's got a little bit of scratches, a, a little bit of scratching on the... Uh, you know, on the on the uh, frame itself, but other than that, it's in very nice shape. Very a very solid feeling gun, so pretty cool. And again, it's got the it's got the toe kick to get the to get the magazine out. It, you know, comes with the lanyard loop, and this one actually had the lanyard with it. I do not know if the lanyard is stock or not, or if that's been replaced. I can't I can't tell. So. Uh, but it seems like a, a pretty nice gun, and the safety does work. You know, that's it's a trigger block safety. It stops the trigger from coming back, and uh, and you know, obviously, it's something you could you could uh, easily you know fire a, a, 
you know, if you want to, if you, I suppose you could carry it with the trigger down. It, I, I don't know if it has a, if it has a, uh, take a look. Well, it has a firing pin block, so I, I think you'd be, you'd probably be okay uh, carrying this hammer down. And it doesn't look like, oh yeah, see, it's got a rebounding hammer. So the hammer's not actually on the, on the uh, guy here, and it looks like there is something that's holding that off, so it won't, it won't, uh, you can't touch. Yeah, see, I mean, let me do that again. So if I, if I squeeze it, you can see the, you can see the, watch the uh, trigger of the hammer. You see, I can push it all the way in, but if I just have it out, I cannot push it all the way in. So there is a, there is a block in there to stop the trigger from coming all the way down onto the firing pin if you're not squeezing the trigger. So, interesting little gun. Hey there, uh, one more thing I wanted to show you. I did uh, I did take a quick look at the book and uh, remember I told you before you had these two these two uh, cams, right? These, these rollers and basically in order to disassemble the gun you're going to take a, they, they say either use a, uh, a screwdriver or the bore tool and you push this assembly forward and then you can eventually lift it out but I don't I don't know if you can see it or not uh, let me let me bring the camera down a little further there we go. so this is the roller action so when the when the gun is fired, watch the, you see how the two rollers now come out? Well, those are going to get, those get pushed out by the action of the firearm. So being stuck in these little grooves, as the, as the barrel reciprocates back, then those guys come back in. And that's basically how that works. But uh, the little, the little manual, the do everything manual, the, these, the little, these are quick and dirty little books. These things work great. And I'm very, very pleased with those. Um, but there's a uh, there's a field strip, and he says use a 3 16th inch diameter screwdriver or the bore rod from the tool kit. Uh, insert it in the hole in the roller cam and apply pressure against the recoil tube until the roller cam, I think, is about one inch forward, and the cuts in the slide are aligned with the lugs in the roller cam. Begin to apply upward pressure until the barrel assembly is clear to slide. Slowly release to the rear until the coil spring is relaxed. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to push this forward until everybody clears all his cuts, and then you're going to try to lift up on it at the same time. Well, there's no way with this bore tool because it doesn't go all the way in. There's just no way you're going to get away with that. You know, you you really need you're going to need another set of hands here. But I can see I can see the whole object of the game is you're going to come out, right, you're going to lift this up, then slowly and carefully let this rise up and then release the pressure. And now you're, and that's how you get that out of there, right? Take, take the spring off, I don't know if you can see that or not, here the, and here are the two rollers inside there. So, of course, now that i got it taken apart, I probably won't be able to get it back together again. But that's basically the object of the game. So you're going to go. And what I need to do is figure out how to get this. There we go. Far enough in that the uh, that I can get this to lay down again. So. And that's going to be the hard part. She's all back together. Not not a trivial thing, and these rollers are free floating. It's very easy for them to, to go wonky and get out of get out of position and everything. But anyway, so but that's how that's how you remove the roller assembly from the uh, from the slide. Hi, let's talk a little bit about markings. Now I was told this was a police turn-in. 
Uh, it, that's kind of weird because the the markings on the gun don't support that. So if we look at the uh, if we look at the um, frame here, you can see here's the serial number, and you see this little RID here next to it. That indicates uh, military manufacture. If this had been a civilian gun, it would have been marked. Uh, CZS for Seska Zabrowska Strakonokits or something like that. So this actually was a, a weapon that was uh, of military manufacture based on the RID and there's more uh, about that in just a second. So uh, it, this is on the left side. So if we turn around to the, to the right side of the frame we will see here uh, let, me, let me try to do that a little differently. Okay. You see the uh, you see that little uh, mark there. That's a, a set of cross swords, and the five three is the last two digits of the date. So this this firearm was uh, manufactured in 19 uh, uh, acceptance marks, uh, and this gives you the uh, year of manufacture. So the the cross swords is an exception acceptance mark, but the 53 is uh, the year of manufacture. So again, this is a this is another military symbol, not a not a uh, what do you call it? Not a uh, commercial. So this really does look like it's a military gun. Uh, another thing here is it's kind of hard to see, but if you look if you look, uh, let me see. You can just barely see it. That round oval there has a VO, it's either a VOP or a VOR mark on it here, right here. VOP or VOR in that oval. And that indicates that the gun has been rearsenaled. And it tells you which repair service organization. Unfortunately, I can clearly see the VO. Uh, yeah, it does look like a VOP to me. So uh, whichever organization the P stands for instead of the R. So that's so that's pretty cool. Then of course here on the on the slide you've got the uh, import marks. So this was imported by Intrac in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's a CZ52 Czech Republic, and it's a 7.62 by 25, which I didn't mention before. So that's that's the uh, the markings on there. And last and, and sort of least, if you come back up into the into the the uh, ejection port, uh, obviously you have the serial number again on the barrel. But next to the serial number, it's very faint. You probably won't be able to. Oh, maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit as I move this around. But there is a round uh, circle with a T stamped in it, and if that that T inside the circle is a testing mark from military. So that means that, the, that this gun has been tested by the military. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I didn't find any other I didn't find any other marks on it, but these were the ones that, uh, that were obvious. So it really looks like this is a military uh, firearm. You know, maybe it moved out of the military into, uh, into the uh, police. But it really looks to me like this is a military issue firearm, not a, a true police firearm. So I thought you might find that that interesting going through some of those uh, going through some of those uh, markings. Okay, we've had our our bench review. We've uh, taken apart the uh, the slide and we've uh, looked at the markings. Let's take it to the range. Okay, the last firearm we're going to shoot today is a. Uh, Czechoslovakian CZ-52. Uh, I added this to my collection because it has a roller lock uh, action and I did not have an, uh, an example of a roller lock action. I was told when I purchased this that it was a, a uh, police trade-in but the markings on it are all military so I'm really surprised uh, that they didn't do that. This gun is actually two years older than I am. Uh, this gun was made in 53, manufactured in 53. Um, and I'm hoping that it'll uh, that it will uh, shoot real well. Um, I don't know. In the previous part of the video, I said it didn't have a decocker. That's wrong. If you take if you take the safety and push it up, 
you do get a decock. So, uh, so it's a, a single action only with decock. So let's throw a couple rounds down range. Now this has a heel release for the uh, magazine. So let's throw, throw a couple rounds down range with this and we'll see how this guy shoots. This one, the, uh, the front sight on this is really slender. Oh, well, it'd probably help if I took the safety off. Oh yeah, we hit the black. Uh, oh, failure to feed. I didn't have the, uh, I didn't have the, uh, what do you call it, in all the way to magazine. This is the first time I'm shooting this firearm. So, take a little bit of getting used to. Again, a fairly hefty trigger pull on this. Uh, it, and it's not a crisp break, it's a little gritty. Another failure to feed. Yeah, this uh, this magazine is not happy. I do have a second magazine for this. We'll try it. And that's all of it. That's an eight round uh, eight round mag on this. Uh, this shoots the Tokarev round. Um, uh, 762 by 25 and it is as you can see it's a necked cartridge and it's a quite a quite peppy little cartridge to shoot it's very fast so it's it's a 30 caliber but it is a very it is a very fast uh, very fast round coming out of there in fact my understanding is this stuff is not not real good for soft uh, body armor this stuff will cut right through it Boy, it doesn't shoot badly at all once you get the, the feel of it. And that's it. So another another great gun to shoot. Boy, that one that one was a lot of fun. Uh, I I have to say of the two guns, um, I like the I like the trigger pull on the VC better, but I like the way the the uh, high power fits in the hand better. It's a, it's got a little beefier. It's got a little bit beefier uh, grip, and you feel like it's a little more comfortable. You can really get a good grip on the gun, especially, especially shooting one-handed. So anyway, so those are the those are the three guns I wanted to finish up with, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good afternoon.